Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Native News Update. It's Friday, January 18th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. A federal judge has rejected a bid by Urban Outfitters to move a trademark infringement case against the clothing retailer and its subsidiaries out of New Mexico. The Navajo Nation sued Urban Outfitters last year, alleging it violated trademarks on the Navajo name. The tribe is seeking monetary compensation and an order permanently forbidding Urban Outfitters from using the name Navajo or variations of it. Defense attorneys had argued that the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, where the company's headquarters are located, should handle the case because it would be more convenient for witnesses and has taken up more intellectual property matters. The U.S. District Court in Albuquerque agreed that the case would move along quicker in Pennsylvania, but it said that the change of venue merely would shift inconvenience to the Navajo Nation. The Stillaguamish tribe has lent its support to the Department of Fish and Wildlife's investigation of four bald eagles found dead east of Granite Falls, Washington, on January 9th, after having been shot with what appears to have been a small caliber rifle. Fish and Wildlife Sergeant Jennifer Merstad explained that her department, along with the Humane Society and Conservation Northwest, were able to raise funds for a reward of $3,750 for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the shooter of the eagles. In addition, Stillaguamish Tribe has agreed to offer an additional $10,000. To report any information related to the deaths of these eagles, you can call 1-877-933-9847 or email report poaching at dfw.wa.gov. First Nations in Manitoba will gather at the Marble Hotel in Winnipeg, Manitoba, January 29th and 30th, to discuss treaty implementation and whether the province's bans should refuse to allow the Assembly of First Nations to speak for them on treaty negotiations any longer. Many Manitoba chiefs were livid when Assembly of First Nations National Chief Sean Atlio met with Prime Minister Stephen Harper on January 11th. Even though Harper didn't bend to the demand of many chiefs to include Governor General David Johnston and hold a meeting at a larger, more neutral location than Harper's own office. Manitoba was not the, at the table for the meeting, neither was anyone from Ontario or the Northwest Territories. Numerous chiefs from other provinces boycotted as well. Many Treaty First Nations argue their treaties were with the Queen and therefore her representative in Canada should be at the table for treaty implementation discussions. The government and some other chiefs, however, argue that the executive power of the Crown now lies with the Prime Minister and it would be inappropriate for Johnson to participate. In other First Nation news, according to the Canadian press, the Queen has rejected an appeal to intervene in Ch Chief Theresa Spence's liquids-only protest but says she is taking careful note of the concerns for the chief's health. In a letter dated January 7th, Buckingham Palace tells a supporter of Spence that the chief should deal instead with the federal cabinet. The letter says it is not a matter in which the queen would intervene. As a constitutional sovereign, Her Majesty acts through her personal representative, the Governor General, on the advice of her Canadian ministers, and therefore it is with them that your appeal should be directed. The letter also says the Queen understands the concerns about the welfare of Spence, who is now well into her sixth week of protest, surviving only on fish broth and tea. The response is addressed to Jonathan Francoeur, a small businessman in British Columbia, who took it upon himself to write to the Queen on December 15th. It is signed by Miss Jenny Vine, deputy to the senior correspondence officer. Live in organ donation in Native American communities is a current topic of research by Nancy Ferenwald, an associate professor at the South Dakota State University's College of Nursing. Since 2003, Nancy and a team of researchers, tribal elders, and healthcare professionals have been working to bridge the gap between the decline in Native American health and living organ donation by distributing culturally relevant educational materials. Her latest research will focus on collecting information from Native American dialysis patients on three reservations in South Dakota providing educational materials about the process, benefits, and risks of living kidney donation. She'll also focus on how to have a conversation about organ donation with family members. 
The research will be funded by a five-year grant awarded to Sanford Research by the National Institute on Minority Health and Disparities. The grant will also bring healthcare professionals and tribal communities closer together with the establishment of a collaborative research center for American Indian Health in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where Farinwald will serve as the principal investigator for the center's research on culturally targeted education on living kidney donation. The goal of our research in 2013 will be to bring resource to dialysis centers and reservations that lack adequate patient and family education. Seminole Classic Casino, the first Native American casino in the country, celebrates its grand reopening. As part of the historic attractions festivities, Seminole Tribe of Florida Chairman James E. Billy, Seminole Tribe of Florida Hollywood Board Representative Christopher Osceola, and Seminole Tribe of Florida Big Cypress Tribal Council Representative Manuel Tiger cut a ribbon to inaugurate the loosest slots in America gaming area, a selection of 29 popular slot machines guaranteed to pay out the most often of their model of slots anywhere in the country. Central to the casino's renovation is an expanded gaming floor featuring more than 100 new slot machines and nine additional table games providing more than 40% more games. Seminole Classic Casino, located in Hollywood, Florida, pioneered Indian gaming when it opened as the country's first large stakes bingo hall in 1979, eventually expanding with gaming machines and poker. You can check out the casino at SeminoleHollywoodCasino.com. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.